Okay, and welcome to the video where I introduce HTML forms to you. Let's take a look at what we're going to do today. So as you can see, I've, I've kind of created three HTML pages here, and, and we're going to kind of see what we're going to do with all these in a minute. Um, but let me first just say we're creating an HTML form, and I'm going to show you how to do that and we're only focusing in on HTML. We're not gonna do any PHP, which is a, a separate language that is server side, that allows servers to analyze and, and process the information that forms collect and send to them. So the first thing to do here is create a form, all right, by using the form attribute or the form element and a couple attributes that belong in here. All right, so the first attribute is gonna be action. So action is kind of where are you gonna send the form to? Where am I being directed to after you hit the submit button? So for right now, I have that directed to a page uh, within this file called form.html and I have a method attribute and if you hover over that, you can kind of get the idea of what this does. Uh, again, that's a nice, really nice feature of VS Code. I'm just going to put the post uh, here. You could use get. Um, either one is, uh, is fine for, for our method because we're not actually sending anything at this point. All right, so there's the form. This is pretty much a container element. You have these two attributes that kind of direct where we're going to and what to do with the information. But everything else is going to go inside of this form. All right. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do here, this is going to be my form login. Right. So that's the login page uh, that we're going to have. So what I'm going to show you is how to create a text field that can take in like a username and a password. All right. So the first thing I'm going to create here is a label. This label uh, is, is what people are going to see, right? This is going to be the text uh, that people are going to see. So I'm going to say, um, enter your username. Give them some direction of what to do with this text field, all right? So I want them to enter their username. And let's go ahead and come down. We'll get to the attribute here in a minute. So I'm going to create an input of type text. Now notice that this is a self-closing element. All right, so there's no closing tag. And that's why the label is so important because this input type text is just an empty box. Nothing's going to be in there unless I, I'll show you a couple things you can put in there. But for now, it's going to be an empty box. So we have to provide a label for it to indicate that the label, what I want you to do with this box, all right? I want you to enter your username. So we need to tie these two things together. So how I do that is giving the input an ID. So I'm gonna call this uh, user input, username input. <coughs> and since that's my ID, I'm just going to copy that and paste it right up here so I don't make any spelling errors, I don't make any capitalization errors. I want these to match in order for this to correspond correctly. So now this label is for this input that I ID as username input. Notice there's no hashtags here, like we did with, with the anchor elements, because fours really only work with IDs. There's no need to tell it to look for an ID. It knows to do that already. Okay, so there we go. We now have a label, we now have an input box. And it's gonna look just fine. But what do we want it to do, right? We want it to capture information. So if we wanna capture information, we have to provide it with a value. Now, you can leave this blank for now because the user is going to enter an information into the text field that information is then going to go into this value field, all right? But we can't have just all these values 
you know, all over the place being sent to this PHP form to be analyzed, we have to kind of organize it in a way. So we don't know what the value is, but I can establish a name attribute, and I'm going to say username, right? Because I need to understand that when somebody types into this box, it's going to now be paired with the name username. So I'll have a name value pair on my server side. And so if I want to look for what specifically was in this box, I look for the name username and I look at the value and they're tied together now. So let's just take a look at what's happening here uh, on here. So let's go ahead and run this. And there we see enter your username. All right. And I can type in here. And everything is fine. Now notice when I click on the label, it highlights the box, right? The box is highlighted, it's darker. I'm off of that. There's no cursor, nothing. But I click on enter and I go into the box. That's because the label is attached to that. So if I change this, right? and refresh, now the label doesn't match anymore. When I click here, it doesn't go into the box. So that's the power of this four, being connected to the correct ID, is that you can click on here, and it gives you the text field that it's associated with. Okay, so we're gonna do something very similar for the password. So let's just go ahead and copy that. We'll come down, control C. And we'll come down here and we're going to do, this is going to be for password input, enter your password. And this time I'm going to change the type from text to password. And the ID is going to be password input. Value again remains the same. And we'll make the name password, right? So whatever they enter in the username text box gets stored as username. Whatever value they enter in the password text box gets stored as password. So we come back here and notice they're on the same line because these are all inline elements. So if you want them to be stacked on top of each other, you have to add a line break here and so there we go and now we can come back and rerun this and there's your username and there's your password notice the difference between text and password the username you're able to see the characters being entered password you are not so Let's check out what's happening here. Uh, we want to be able to submit the information. So we're going to use a new input. This time we're not going to use a label because this is going to be a submit button. We don't need a name or an ID. We're just kind of copying what I did before. But what we do need is a value for the submit. If you're using a type submit, you need a value. Because again, there's nothing here right, to indicate what goes inside of it. So you're going to use the value to say um, submit. And that's going to show up on the little submit button that we're about to create. So there's my submit. And again, let's just put in a br tag. Make that look a little nicer. And there we go. So I can enter my stuff. I can hit submit and it takes me to my form demo page, which we haven't created yet. But uh, what if I don't put anything in here? What if I just hit submit? It still takes me, right? Even though I didn't put a password in there. Well, if you want it to require a username, require a password, 
then you can put the required attribute in here. And what that's going to do is it's going to require the user to enter information. Now, this is not checking if the username and password are correct. All it's checking is whether or not you put something in there. So it's completely blank. If I hit submit, it tells me I get to fill out the field. So put that in and then submit. And now I need to put something in for the password. Here we go. Now submit and now it accepts it. All right, so that's the required attribute. That's the username and password. And that's a login page. Notice that it's taking me to this form.html, and we're going to start working on this on the next video. All right, take care.